Okay, good. So this is the first um, Q&A webinar on chapter one and four of Jorn's book, uh, Applying Stems and Branches Acupuncture and Clinical Practice. And uh, we are planning to have uh, more of these meetings and hopefully being able to cover all the chapters in the books, uh, in the book. And um, yeah, so these, these, this meeting, as, as Fahin said, yeah, it was initiated by Kirsten and Bea um, and the colleagues from Myanmar who've been studying this book. And, um, but there were also many other colleagues that have been studying these books and many questions came up. And so we wanted to open the space uh, and it's supposed to be a space for sharing and discussing. Um, but as Rahin said, because there are so many people, we have to keep it in this format. And uh, I hope it'll still feel that you're all part of it. Um, good. Um, yeah, so maybe we just start, Johan. Yes, uh, Rehin, can you, can you uh, check the waiting room sometimes so that uh, we don't have to watch it all the time? Because I left everybody in now, but not sure if I can see that all the time. Um, then another thing is that when you ask a question or you have a remark or something like that in the chat, please start with your own name first so we can really see who is asking. All right. Good. Um, yeah, I think the main main um... maybe ra raise your hand if you can. There's a button somewhere that says raise your hand, so I can see that someone wants to ask a question. And like you said, please start with your name. Then. Yeah, but raising hand is more video. Then, but if they chat, you will get it. You will see the chat. Okay. Good. Um, let's start with uh, one question. That's quite fundamental to understanding this philosophy. Um, can you talk to us about the, the important significance of uh, the four emanations, uh, Yuan Heng Li Zen, and how to, how to work with that in clinic, what it, what it means practically? Yeah, that is indeed, it's not, it's not an easy subject indeed. Um, maybe, maybe I put something on the screen. Let me see where it is here. Um, what could be the practical use of the four emanations? That is something which is, it is a theoretical subject. So you can't just say it is very practical. It is the four emanations are um, an idea from the, uh, the I Ching. So when you, when you see the first sentence of the um, of heaven, the, the six young lines of heaven. Then you see that it starts with Yuan Heng Li Zhen. That's a, the Chinese uh, characters you see there. And what are they? They are called the four virtues. They are called the four faces. They are called the five movements. Um, they have many, many names. And uh, the name emanations is actually not mentioned in the Ying. But is um, is my invention, you could say, because emanation is something which is similar to its origin, but on the other hand, it seems different. It seems from, let's say, um, Hang is heaven from the south, Yuan is heaven from the east, Li is metal is heaven from the west. So there there are certain aspects of heaven you see in different areas. And they describe the background of everything. Heaven is always there. It is, it is ever existing. And it shows itself in, in four directions. And when you look at the four heavens or the five heavens, the, originally there were only four heavens. Only later there was the fifth heaven in the, in the middle, which is, uh, is, uh, is Earth. So what you see in this concept is a kind of subtle, on a subtle energy, on a subtle level, um, the beginning of life on Earth, you know, as seasons, as whooshing, the five phases, as the five seasons, as the five zang, et cetera, et cetera. 
So it is not a physical thing. It is a, let's say, an energetic, a subtle field of existence, which, when it becomes more dense, shows itself as five movements, as five zang, as channels, etc., etc., even as five wuxing points. Now, this is more or less a picture you can imagine. It starts here at the top, this is heaven, and then it shows itself here on earth with the four different directions and the four emanations. Now, Tian heaven is something which is um, often translated as, as initiating, which I think is not the right translation. It should be initiative. It's an activity. It's a force of action. And that force of action shows itself in four different directions, you could say. These directions are ever existing, but at, when heaven comes down, it shows itself in four directions. And so we go through these, and you know these, these um, four emanations, and they show themselves later as wood, fire, metal, and water. And in the center, there is earth. Now, this is something which is not from the classics. Um, this is something in, I think it's now nearly 50 years I'm working um, with Chinese medicine. These are points, I, they are not in my book, um, but these are points I found out they work very well on the four emanations or on the five phases. So if there's an issue with one of the emanations or one of the four or five heavens, these are points you can use to, to ask that emanation to, to fulfill its role in the manifestation as we have here. Now, what does it mean that when the emanation or the heaven doesn't work well? Is it's what I mean with that, it's not only on the level of, for instance, wood or fire or metal or anything like that, but you see an overall insufficiency of that energy. So of course we have learned that liver and gallbladder are related to the east, are related to um, to spring, are related to the emanation you want, are related to the green as your dragon. But if this energy is not fulfilling its task, then you see everywhere you see this kind of problems. There is a lack of a guiding. There's there's a, there's a kind of chaos. There is no vitality. There is no initiative on no level. So not only in the East, but on any level, you see there is an issue of the Yuan. So if that happens, that it works on all levels, because Yuan is an aspect of Qian, of heaven. So when there is this lack of creation, lack of guiding, lack of rooting engine, lack of initiative, etc., then you can see there's an issue of um, of the emanation UN or the green azure dragon. And then you will see in the pulse, and that is, I think I will underline that, you don't do it because you see it, but, but because when you look in the pulse, spleen 4 is needed for. So if there's no need to treat spleen 4 according to your diagnosis, then you have to think twice. Does that make sense, Hun? Um, yeah, in a, um, how does that relate then to the five antique points? Um, there are a lot of questions about the five antique points. So to do it on a more practical level, yeah, the, the, uh, there was this question about the five antique points on the yin and um, on the yang. And on the yin, they start with wood or with that kind of quality of emanation yuan. On the yang, they start with metal, uh, which is related to emanation li. And yet you say in your book that all Jingwell points have the quality of yuan. Um, can, you, can you explain that? That's a bit uh, yes. confusing, I think. That is, that, is, that is always a difficult thing. Um, first of all, when you read the uh, Ling Shu or the Su Wen or the Nanjing, 
you will always, <laughs> nearly always, find uh, things in these books they don't coincide with each other. The Chinese classics are made not in by one writer. They are there's a collection of of uh, um, writers who wrote these classics. Besides that, um, there is the Chinese don't um, find it very difficult to write things they seem an opposite of each other, like. We all know from the Chinese hourly clock and the people who study stems and branches uh, already from deep energies that gallbladder is water as well as wood. Both are there, and gallbladder is also part of Xiaoyang, which is fire. So the gallbladder is not only wood, it's more than that. It is it's too simple to say it's only wood. That's one thing. Secondly, um the, I, I, will, I will give you, I will show you again a, uh, let me see where it is. Um, yeah, let's start with this. You can see this, yeah? Yeah. Um, I just put a, three chapters, like Ling Shu One, Nanjing 68, when they talk about perverse qi. We need to talk about what perverse chi is, but and then Ling Shu 44, you see in blue and also in black. And you will see there are discrepancies, there are not similar um, writings. So, first of all, in, in chapter Ling Shu 1, you see the Jing Well point related to spring, that's in chapter 44. Chi rises and is initiative in, initiates. So, that's where the chi starts. Now let's first talk about that. Um, it means that at that point, the channel, meridian, whatever you want to call it, is very tiny, is small, is, is vibrant. It's not a huge river. We'll see later when it goes to the sea. It's more vibration. And that's also needed where it where the other channels can enter again. So the, there are points of transformation from one cha channel in the other channel. So that's for as well the yang as the yin. Um, I will come back to that combination of metal and wood later. So this is where the chi rises. But when you look at the Nanjing, when they talk about that pathological energy is entering the body, a pathological energy, what is pathological energy? Pathological energy is energy which is not at the right moment or the right place. So if it's warm or hot, according to the calendar, that is possible. That is not perverse chi. But if it's according to the calendar, it should be like average weather or cold weather and it is hot, then hot is seen as perverse chi. Now, when that enters through the Jing well points, it gives fullness below the heart because liver grabs the spleen, it says. So when there is perverse energy entering through the Jing well points, then the Jing well points can be used to treat fullness below the heart, which means the, the area where just below the heart, which is the diaphragm area, where the liver and, and, and spleen are located, you see that that area is affected by the pathological chi. And often, not so much in the liver, but much more in the spleen, because it affects the liver, the liver grabs the spleen, and then you see spleen issues, and that gives fullness below the heart, as they say, but to be honest, in clinic, you see actually heart issues more than below the heart. So in these cases, you can use a Jing well point. But like in Ling Shu chapter 44, you see that you, when there is a spleen disease happening on a wood day, that's something which is a disadvantageous combination. It's not a good combination. So when there is a spleen disease 
for instance, arrhythmia of the heart or sugar imbalance or difficulties with the nourishment of muscles or well, you can think about anything. When it comes on the root day, also then you can treat the Jingwa point. Now, the Jingwa point, they remove the spurs of traction of qi in the channels and vitalize Wei qi and Ying qi. So it really takes care of movement of the qi. That's very much what it is. Jing well gives movement. It takes away the obstruction. So if you don't feel any obstruction according to your pulse diagnosis or any other diagnosis, that doesn't make sense to treat the Jing well point. But you would use that uh, also on the Yang Meridian, which already has a metal quality. Yes, and that is that is a question we need to talk about. Um, first of all, metal and wood seem to be contradictionary, but they aren't. In in the um, creation of life, metal needs wood. If there was not enough wood in metal, it would be hard. If there was no flexibility. It would break, metal will break. So even metal is emerges from wood in in the in the earth. Like if water has no fire, it will be ice. There needs to be a certain temperature to make it fluid and liquid. So if it's too cold, it becomes ice. If it's too hot, because it becomes damp. Wood needs earth. If a tree has no earth then it will fall down. Fire needs metal. Like if there's no metal, no nothing to attach to, the fire would not be able to show itself. If there's no nothing where fire can attach it to self to, then just it wouldn't be there. It's like the spirit, like the Shen. If the Shen has no physical body, has no Jing, the Shen will not be able to attach itself to, to the body. And earth needs water. If earth has no water, then the wind comes and will blow it away. So that is very, that's called law of friendship. That's not so much from the Chinese, this word law of friendship. Uh, that's more from the Tibetan medicine. But it also mentioned in classics sometimes, but not as clear as the K cycle or the, the Wu cycle or the Ma cycle. Um, but definitely that needs its own. So when you look at the yin channels, um, the yin channels, they share a wood point is also related to you one. Both. Right, uh, yeah. Uh, and in yang channel, it's opposite, like metal is wood. Now, it, uh, the yin channels have the tendency to be like stable, have, have more, more substance, more more um, uh, ma material. The young channels are more active, more subtle. Yeah. So in the yin aspect, we need this combination, like wood and wood, both vital, the beginning of life, there's a movement going on. In yang, there is already movement. So when you look to the first, the first point on the yang channel, which is a metal point, it is also related to wood. It also has this vibration, receiving and giving to the other channel. But on the other hand, it is also a wood and metal. There are the horizontal plane. That horizontal plane is necessary for the young level to exist. The horizontal plane is the level we live on. So it, it needs that quality. And the next point is fire and water up and up. Down. So it creates a kind of cross, you could say, where the horizontal field and the vertical axis of your own being is combined. And then it goes to the earth together with wood. And then it's all stark. So there's a reason why on the young channel this is combined. It's not something which is strange. But when you treat, when you see these what I showed you as the Jing Well points, 
when the pathologic energy enters, you see it as a wood quality. You will see it as a wood. So then that energy enters through that wood quality. On the other hand, sometimes in the pulse, it's very difficult to discriminate. Because when you, for instance, a very well-known um, example is that when there is pain, well, if there's good pain, nearly all of the cases, there is large intestine one needed to be treated because there is too much constriction. If there's so much constriction, there's stagnation. And so there's no place for the root anymore. It becomes too hard, too constricted. So when you sedate large intestine one, you allow the wood to be there. And then suddenly you see that um, there is flow of energy. So in this case, you sedate large intestine one. But in other cases, like in small intestine, for instance, when small intestine um, is affected by um, by perverse energy or pathology, or even by emotions, if this possible, it can have an effect on the lungs. So the lungs are not able to breathe completely, not opening it up. Then you use small intestine one, often together with four, to allow the lungs to be open. So in that case, you don't sedate, but you activate. And that's not only metal, it's also wood. And that's sometimes very difficult to understand that they both can be available, but you will see in the pulse that when you check small intestine one with somebody suffocating, has no possibility to expand the lungs, you find this metal quality on the on small intestine. And then you don't sedate that, but you activate it. And then you suddenly see it opens up because that combination of small intestine one and four opens up the lungs. So um, is what you're saying then that the the shoe points on the yang meridians, because they have these cur-cycle relationships, um, and you describe that it's metal and, and wood, yeah, so that creates the, the horizontal axis, and then it's fire and water, which creates the uh, vertical axis that's far more creative than the shoe points on the yin, which follow uh, a sheng cycle. Um, they... Um... Yes, you could say so. The, they follow a Sheng cycle and that is nourishing. Yeah, so when you work on the yin, it's very nourishing. But they, there's, how to say that, there is, there is a difference. On the yin channel, um, there is not only nourishment, but there's also something you can call um, harmonizing. It's much more harmonizing than the young channel. So in that sense, the young channel is really taking initiative. It creates something. And the yin is much more harmonizing in that sense. Um, it, it, one of the main differences, which is important to, to mention here, is that on the yin channel, the shoe stream point is also a yuan source point. Uh, there you see that, that it goes together, this earth quality and this harmonizing quality of the yuan chi, yuan source point, works through the whole channel. In the yang channel, the yuan source point is a different point. We have five points, like, like five phases points, and then the yuan source point is a different point. So we have six important points. And the yuan source point on the yang channel works much more on the channel than it works on the zang or the fu. Like the yuan source point on the yin channels, that works very much also on the five zan, not so much in the yang channels. So uh, small intestine three, for instance, has a has has an effect on uh, on the yang itself, like it's the open point of dumai. It works on on activating yang, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And small intestine four is very different from that. Mm -hmm. Um. There's been one question uh, about um, you mentioned this this uh, concept of love uh, 
in the in the beginning of the book especially and um you say that Jing contains the chi from heaven and earth that is realized and expressed as love through the heart. Uh, and the question is, why do you focus on, on love. love and not on all the other kind of emotions? Yeah. Let me first... Um, one second. I want to change something. I see something flickering in my um, on my screen, so I can't... Um, don't see myself constantly. Let me check. Okay. Sorry for that. I'm back again. Um, I don't see myself. Do you still see me because I don't see I anything. see you, yeah. Yeah. I don't see anything anymore. Um, um yeah, I, I see you just just as before. So um I'll continue then because okay. I don't see anything. Okay. I can't I can't do anything anymore. One second, let me see if I yeah, now you're back again. Sorry for that. Let love. me ask you a different different question before you answer. Um okay, it... okay. let's let's talk about love. <laughs> That's uh, a good one. Yeah. Right, right. Uh let me just quickly ask you a different question that, that also came up. Um about Cheng and, and curse cycle. Yeah, which which you described a bit in the in the uh, antique points. Um, so uh, Sheng cycle is nourishing. You said, yeah, and curse cycle, they call it balancing. You said it's it's creative in a certain way, or or it's a law of friendship. Um, law of friendship is the reverse curve. Reverse curve. Um, so the question is, when you use the Sheng cycle, what do you nourish? Which which aspect do you nourish? And when you use the curse cycle, what does it mean to balance when you use the curse cycle? Yeah. That's a, yeah. I try to keep it short because that's a, that's a basic question which needs actually a longer answer. So I'll, I'll do my best. Nourishing is like mother and son. The mother nourishes the son. That's always what we teach. But it's more than that. It's it's the 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 figure of water going to wood, going to fire, etc. That is related to a form principle. So it's very much related to nourishing the form, which we are inside outside. We are made from substance. So when you work on the Sheng cycle. It nourishes um, everything you can think of as form in contradiction to the K cycle. The K cycle is more related to Qi. Um, the difference of Xian and K cycle is that, let's start with the Wei Qi. When you look at the Wei Qi, where well, the Wei Qi flows, let's say, near the skin, um, and is helping us to defend ourselves, but also to be awake, to be able to react without thinking. Um, that is happening during the day. And in the night, it goes inside, and it cleanses our body and our five zone in a co-cycle relationship. So it goes from, from earth to water to fire, etc. And it cleanses the body th through the Wei Qi. So it is, it's cleansing the form principle by the aspect of life, which is very young. So during the day, it's awake and it helps us to have eyes open and to react to things. So when something happens here, I look without thinking, that's Wei Qi. That is very necessary. We have that without our I am in between. We do it. We don't think about it. So we defend ourselves. We are awake. But in the night when we sleep, it goes inside and there it cleanses the body. That's a yang principle within the yin. Th 
through that life aspect, we cleanse in the body. The yin aspect of it is, you could say, the shen cycle. Yeah, the shen cycle is much more nourishing the form, helping it, helping it to move, helping it in its transformation, helping it to heat up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's not cleansing; it's helping the substance. So that's the difference. And often the K cycle is translated as, as controlling cycle. Um, but controlling is different from, I think is different from what is meant. It is also not grabbing only. That's in pathology. In pathology, it controls it. It grabs the chi, it seizes the chi. Uh, but controlling is much more like in archery, for instance, when you have an arrow, you, you hold the arrow, that's the controlling, but you also let go. It's not only holding it, but also you let go of it. So it allows things to happen. The life principle, when you listen to life, then, or circumstances according to life, something happens to you, and the less you interfere, interfere the more it can evolve in a certain direction, which is according to the life. It means that you hold when necessary, but you also let go when necessary. That is the case cycle. So in pathology, it is like it subdues, it, or the pathology enters through the case cycle. It subdues earth, subdues water, water subdues fire. But in our system, when it functions well, it knows how to let go that earth allows water to be, or Earth controls, in brackets, or in, in quotes, the water a bit because it's too strong. So in that sense, it's less controlling, but allowing and controlling. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay, so so practically, when, when you talk about this cleansing action, or, or so how how do you use the curse cycle then? In, or in, in for what kind of condition symptoms would you would you use a curse cycle relationship then there are two things to say i think one thing is that the when we look at the stems and we didn't discuss the stems or not yet but when you look to the stems like gallbladder and spleen are both in the great movement earth um, they all have a curse cycle relationship and in the so what Dr. Fabian always said is that when you treat the ghost cycle, you should do it during the day, first of all. The night it's active inside, and during the day you can use it to, to heal people. And in and the opposite is that during the night, or let's say let's say from six o'clock in the evening till six o'clock in the next day. If you treat them, it's it's easier to work on the Shang cycle. That's just a, a kind of rule of a thumb. Yeah, it's not always like that, but it is more healthy when you want to cure people to work on the ghost cycle. But you also have to be careful with it. Um, you can't just say, I use plain one to bring wood into the earth. That's what many people say you should do that. Uh, according to my understanding, you first need to balance the wood, and when the wood is balanced and still necessary, and you see that it's needed, that there is more wood needed in the earth, then you can do a spleen one. But it means that within the spleen, there's a lack of wood chi. When you think about yuan as one of the emanations, yeah. lack, it's a lack of this rising chi. It rises up quickly, this initiative, this creativity. So when it is kind of, the spleen is kind of contained and in itself and has mere more dryness or these things, then it is necessary, you can use spleen one. But if the spleen is quite normal, not just because the book says you should do spleen one, it doesn't make sense. But there are many examples in many books where they say, use plain one immediately when there's a lack of wood. I would say first balance the wood. You can do, use you and source points, lower points, or anything what's necessary in the wood. And when it still is not correct chi in the spleen, 
then you can use plain one. So with balancing the wood, you mean treating the, the liver and the gallbladder? Or, or... If we think in the wuxing, yes. Yeah, yeah. If we think in the wuxing, then, then that's li like liver and gallbladder. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, coming back to, I think, before we go, um, let me see. No, let's continue uh, with, with that. Um, there's a question about uh, seasonal treatments, you know, and how you can use that because uh, that kind of follows the the Sheng cycle here. Yeah, so if you look at the seasons, um, the question is how you can use that um, in treatment, yeah, for preventative treatment or for curative treatment. Uh, how can you use that concept of seasonal and en uh, seasonal energies here? Yeah. There are many examples, and I will try to cover a few, I think. First of all, um, I think we're not going to talk about the Chinese hourly clock now, because that's that, that's definitely something which we will do when, um, when we enter into the branches, 12 branches. Uh, the only thing I can say there is that when the winter enters into the spring, and the spring comes late, it stays cold, it means that there is not a good transition from winter into the spring, then in the Chinese hourly clock, we work, work on the earth quality, that's in this case the liver, to bring the winter energy to the spring in the body, because the body is mirroring what's happening outside in nature. So when there is not enough spring energy, then we can work on the liver energy to bring insight from the winter energy it to the spring energy. That's one thing. Another thing which is important to understand is that nowadays we, we, we often are in the situation, especially in the West here, when the winter is too warm, that we still have our heating system on because there's wind and there's rain. Uh, so we don't experience any more winter so much. So it's often too warm for us because of our luxury, luxury and the possibility to have a heating system. It means that the energy doesn't root itself anymore. So when it's cold, the energy goes inside, like in plants, the plants wither and sort of leaves fall and the energy goes inside and that's life energy that goes to the nucleus. So when it's in the nucleus, then it should be rooted there. And that's needed, that rooting, for the spring energy to come up. So if there's no rooting, then people in the spring will suffer from, let's say, uh, what we call um, tiredness, or spring tiredness, we call that. So then in the beginning of spring, our people are very often very tired in the beginning. That's because there was no rooting. So it means that when you, you see outside what's happening according to your own climate, like here where the winters are too warm, you have to work on that rooting in the winter to prevent people to become ill in spring or even become ill in the summer, because if there's no rooting, there will be more heat in the summer. This is described in one of the first chapters of the Suen. So that's one thing. But coming back to, to that Wu, uh, to, to the Wu Shu points, the, the five antique points, mm -hmm. uh, that is something which is, sounds, seems very strange, like here. Here you see the Jingwell point, springtime. She rises, initiated, uh, we discussed this one, but in Ling Chu's chapter four, it says, you use Jing Wall points for the five Zhang in winter, not so much in spring. You can use the Jing Wall points very much in spring. That's, that's okay. That's not a problem. As well Yang as Yin. But as prevention, if there's something going on in the five Zhang, they say use it in the winter. The five time. Now we go through all these five points. You see in Ling Chu chapter 44, it says 
The Zhang are related to winter, three to Jingwell points. The five colors are related to spring. The five seasons are related to summer. The musical sounds are related to late summer. The five flavors are related to autumn. Yeah. When you look to this sequence of five sun, five colors, seasons, musical sounds, flavors, there is a movement of becoming material, becoming more and more into the substance. Yeah. Five sun are deep inside, chi inside your body. That's where it starts. The five colors are vibrations. So you see maybe colors on the face, but you can't grasp it. It's not, it's not material. And then we go to the seasons. The seasons are happening to us like rain and sun and wind and all these things that, that we already can experience more. And then the musical sounds, it's a voice. We can sing a song. That's a, we use our voice, and the moment you use your voice, your voice, it gets materialized. So, when when you look outside now and you see a tree, if you don't know that it is a tree, you don't know that name, you can't describe it. But we have learned that it is called a tree. So when we say it's a tree, we immediately have an image. So when I look to that side, you don't know what I'm seeing here. And if I don't know the name of what I see, that doesn't say anything for you. But I say, there's a blue book, then immediately that is in your image. So the voice helps you that things are more becoming material. And then with the five flavors, that is very material. The way we taste, the way we smell is, is a, I can explain that to you, but I'm not going to do it now. But that's through material process. That's very something material. So. What you see in this sequence mentioned in the Ling Shu is a, a evolution of qi becoming materialized. And that's what you see in these five points of Jing Well points, Ying Spring points, Shu Stream point, Jing River, and He Si points. It makes it more materialized. That's what's happening in these points. Therefore, this vibrational aspect of Jing Well point and this open point, for instance, of Hei Si, where the Qi enters into, that is an evolution of becoming more substance, more and more material aspects. So it means that when you see issues of colors, like suddenly you see a lot of red in the face or white, or then you can use Ying Spring points. When you see intermittent symptoms, like Sometimes it's active, sometimes it's gone. Sometimes you see a certain period of time that it's active and then it's gone again. That is related to like season, then you use shoe stream points. And when you see that people have voice issues, voice issues is related to Jing River points. And when there are stomach or appetite issues related to the five flavors, then you can use Hei C points according to um, Ling Shu chapter 4, T4. Um, so it means that all winter you can look if it's needed to use Jingwell points so that the Zhang will stay healthy in springtime. In springtime, you can lose, use the Ying spring points when you see it's necessary for the summer to be healthy, that the colors stay healthy. But you can only do that when it matches the pulse that I can, can't say. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense in this way? Yeah. Um, that's, um, I think we'll take a break in, in about 10, 15 minutes, but um, let's come back to uh, that question of Jing and and love and uh how you use once you explained it what what does it mean practically what what you do with it um well um 
It's it's a nice question. I, I like the question because in in my book there are several sentences which I didn't explain so much, but there are actually very um, important questions, uh, important sentences. I think, and this is one of them. Um, when we we have to think about what's the difference between Shen Chi and Jin, that's the first thing. Shen is a level of, well, it's very subtle. It's, it's not something which is in matter. We can't grasp the Shen. We say, we say that the Shen houses in the heart, but we think that the heart is here just uh, like an organ, uh, but actually it's not. The, 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 the Shen is houses in the house, House is housed in the heart, but the heart is not a not meant as a physical thing. It's I think it's a, I think to be honest, it's a bit of a mistake that the heart always is seen as a as a as an organ. We have the organ, but that's much more the pericard or heart constrictor. The heart is a field of energy, which is partly related to the jing, partly related to. Uh, to the spleen or the yi is partly related to the brain, you could say, but it's it's not only where we place the heart. Um, I think that's that's very important to understand that. Um, but through the heart, we communicate with the world. So the world enters through our senses. All these organs, they report to the heart, and the heart reflect to it and maybe reacts to it. But the heart itself has also a vertical connection from, from the heart to, let's say, Governor 20 and to, to heaven, you could say. And it has a relationship to the jinn. So, but it is not a physical thing. It's not from, from this realm. We, we can't see it. We can't grasp it. But the jing is very different. The jing is the most dense energy we have. Uh, is very close to matter. Um, it takes care. It, it, it takes care of maintenance of our body. Uh, but it is very personal. The jing is not social itself. Yeah, we got the jing from our parents. And our parents made love. There is a, there is suddenly a, a creature, and through these two jing, there is again a one jing which helps us to survive, but it can be depleted. The jing can be it's exhausted. Um, and then we are physically exhausted. But the core aspect of the jing is that we actually stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. If you think about that we come from the jing of our parents, they came from their jing parents, and they came from their parents' jing, and so on and so on. We stand on the shoulders of our parents' jing. So we we all have a kind of mutual chi in ourselves. Because we all come from that original jing, you could say. And that original jing is, is something we we still in the West Western science don't understand. What is the essence of Jing? We don't know that. We call it essence. But we actually don't know the essence of Jing. Where does it come from? What is it? And since we don't know that, we make up stories. We make up mythological stories. Like, like Pangu, there was a kind of mystical story of a creature which grows and 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 puts heaven above and earth below and, and stands for many years like that. And then his body became the world and the rivers and the mountains. And so it is a creative story where somebody sacrifices his life to give life to our world. That sacrifice of himself, that letting go of himself, giving without the need to receive, that is an aspect of love. And the same is that when we are created, 
and we don't see it after, often anymore, but that when parents want a child, for instance, they sacrifice something of their own semen, their own origin, their own essence to create another life. That is that mutual thing we all share, which you can call love or intelligence or something which is beyond our personal um, concept, something which is ever existing. Like our concept mind is always time related. But this is something which was before and will go on. That is something which is ever existing. That's why I called it love. But you could also call it intelligence or maybe both. It's not intellect. It's something we learn. That's intellect. Intelligence is something which is a, is a subtle form of chi. I rather call that love. That is housed in the jing. But the jing itself is very individual. But it's useful because when, when, for instance, I wound my hand, then the jing knows that how to bring the skin of the hand back and the muscles, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, instead of that suddenly there is an ear coming out of my hand. It knows that this is the tissue it should be. That's an aspect of love as well. Um, we bring it to our environment through Chiang Mai, through Spleen 4. Spleen 4 is a point which brings the Jing into our social relationship that we can, we can react and relate to our social environment and get the information to it. And through the heart, it expresses that love of the Jing and through the Spleen as well, we know what empathy means. We know what love means but then in a temporary state, not as an eternal state, because it's still related to the principle of me and you. That's a different kind of love. But the, the ever eternal love is always there in the Jing, personally for you, for me, for everyone, but we have the choice to use it. That's up to us all individually. And why I mention that is that healing has to do with that so when the jing is not able to function well or there is no relationship to people then we die slowly or quickly so you always have to take care of the jing because that is the the energy where love resides and the heart opens up like in 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 chinese medicine we know something like uh, Jing Shen. Jing Shen is that you you are here, you're active, you you're conscious of what's happening, you're present, and your presence is there. Then your Jing well is is active. It means that there's a good relationship from that love into the heart, and it is open up to the environment. So taking care of the Jing Shen or the heart water or the fire water axis is crucial for any form of acupuncture. If the heart kidney energy, the fire water axis is not balanced, you can do many things, but then it stays kind of helping out, but it's not really healing. There's need for an inner uh, balance of, of heart and kidney or fire and water to be able to really cure from the inside to allow the body to heal as well, because that intelligence or that love or anything you want to give it, any name you want to give it, is needed for 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 healing. So whatever the 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 symptoms or condition is, somebody comes in with. If you see that the heart chen is not rooted in the jing, you will address that first. Yeah. And if you do only... that, how do you do that? Not only rooted, but there, there should be a relationship. Sometimes you see people where the heart is somewhere in the head only, not in the heart, because the, this is this is in the brains. There is you could say there is the mind, and there is also the heart. The mind is more physical, is is Western science. That's very much the mind. The heart in the in the brain is is something which you can call intuitive or you can call it in relationship with 
with um, understanding without knowing. And when it's in the heart, in the heart, it shows itself through the eyes, it shows itself through the relationship, it shows itself through empathy and sympathy and things like that. So then it's in the heart. Uh, if that is not connected to the jing, to your physical body, but just like um, not related, yeah? So there, let's say the, the jing or the kidney energy is very low, or the heart is hot chi, or the fire is very up and not rooted, etc. You need to establish a harmony there first. Um, one of the major points to do that is kidney 16, if that's possible to treat. Because kidney 16 balances the three gels uh, in the body. Um, and that helps the, the, com the, the communication between the heart and the kidney. But you should look at the activity of the kidney, the activity of the jing, the activity of the heart, the activity of the heart constrictor, et cetera, et cetera. But there needs to be a kind of balance. And often you see in people that that is not balanced because they don't communicate. And one of the things you, you see is that these people are not present. When the heart and the jing communicate, when the, there's heart shen, you're present. But when, I when I'm talking to you now, and I'm thinking about a break, or I think about a cup of tea, or uh, I'm thinking about uh, uh, one of the lights maybe is not good, or anything, like I'm not present, then the Jing Shen is, is disturbed. Right. And that, that is not, that's not a disaster, because these things happen. But if you want to heal, you need to have a present Qi. Okay. So during the treatment, that is needed. And therefore, when you treat that, I ask people always to close their eyes and be silent for 10 minutes because then they can be present in themselves. When you treat the Jing Shen, then you do that first. So this is why love for you or, or that concept of love or presence um, um, goes before all the other emotions. Yes. yes. Yeah. Because you, you tune into an aspect which is not personal. If it's personal, if it becomes personal, it's just part of the other emotions. But there's an aspect which is not personal, and that is that part we can call love. Oh, okay, okay. Um, you talked about Western mind and... and um presence or, or intuition there was a question about you mentioned the law of analogy yeah and then you talk about western cause and effect thinking and uh, eastern law of analogy and um what do you mean with that in yeah to be honest afterwards i was not so happy with that i wrote down eastern and western because in the East, also in India, for instance, there's also cause and effect. When we think about karma, uh, it means that there is an activity which causes an effect, and that effect makes a new cause, you could say. So cause and effect is a sequence in evolution. Something happens, and there's an effect, and something else happens, and et cetera, et cetera. And Western science is based on that. That's why I mentioned it. But it's not originally from the West. It's from. So that's just a concept very much related to time. Definitely, definitely. And therefore, to the mind, or uh, yes, to the mind and thought, because we didn't we didn't talk about that so much. But thinking or thought or mind, um, even that part of the Shen we call mind, is very much related to time, because we learn something from the past and then. We can say it now, but it's built on our concept of the past, not of of the future, you could say. Or we have expectations for the future. And that is all within time. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but that is that cause and effect thinking. Uh, when we spoke about Pangu, for instance, the way he said this, part of his body became the rivers of the earth, part of his body became the sea, that same for our body. Our body is a mirror of nature. So we have vessels uh, seen as, as rivers. Uh, we have mountains on the head, like you know, this 
this the, this picture of the Tang Dynasty. There are mountains uh, on the head. Uh, we we have all kind of uh, aspects. They are not there really, but they show a certain aspect of your body. And so when we say, for instance, that the 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 left eye is related to fire and the left the right eye is related to water. Of course, there is not just fire here, there's the water, but it describes a certain analogy in which when we look to the sky, for instance, we see the sun and we see we, we are on the earth and we know the moon turns around the earth and we both together go around the sun. So the sun itself is a kind of center for, for the earth. So when we say the the left eye is related to fire or related to the sun, we actually say it is a central central force or an essential force. And when the right eye uh, is related to the moon, it's a kind of force which has the ability to change. It's, it's different. Uh, that's why I mentioned, for instance, in my book, that the, the left eye is related to your your authenticity, your constitution, who you really are in the center of your being, while the right eye is more related to um, to change of intuition or a change of emotion, sorry, or or behavior and things like that, because that can easily change, not so much who you really are. So that's more the left eye. So you can't say the sun is here when the, there is, for instance, uh, a solar eclipse that suddenly the eye becomes involved. No, it's not like that. It describes different concepts in nature or in the sky or on earth, which also happens in us. There's no real connection between my left eye and the sun. There's no cause and effect. But similar things which happen to the sun or his place in the universe is the left eye. That's the law of analogy. We are made according to the balance and the contradictions and the way people, the way things cooperate together, that's how it works also in us, in our body. That's why you can say the heart is the house of the Shen, is the house of the emperor. And the emperor was the ambassador of heaven on earth. That's what our Shen also is. Our Shen is the ambassador of heaven at this subtle world in us, and this is the way it works. That's much more the law of analogy. There is no real connection, but we are made in the same way. That's more the law of analogy. And that is not so much a Western approach. That's much more an Eastern approach. Although nowadays, for instance, in Western astrology is similar. You can't say there is a direct line between Saturn and let's say our body, our physical body but it's made in the same way, the same features, you could say. So is there any kind of diagnostic? Um, can you use that for diagnosis or can you use that for when you observe things with a left eye, uh, right eye, or you don't use it like that at all? Yes, I do use that. I do use that in different ways. Um, sometimes people have only left eye issues. Yeah, only left eye issues. Or let's say if you look with your left eye or with your right eye, if you if you look with your left eye to a point somewhere, and then you look in the right eye, you see that you can see sometimes with your right eye it changes and with your left eye it stays at the same. When you look with two eyes and then your left eye, it stays the same. You look with two eyes and you look the right eye, then it changes position. So it means there's a dominant eye. So you, if the dominant eye, for instance, your left eye, that aspect is dominant. That aspect of authenticity, of 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 central centralization of your being, that is um, that's more dominant. But people sometimes have only left eye issues. Then that aspect is related to that that authenticity, but also related to fire. Like when it's with the right eye, then it is related to water. In the concept of the relationship, fire, water, not so much in the wuxi, but in the concept like heart and kidney, eye and water. That that difference relationship is there. Uh, so recently, I, I was with two people who died, and 
when I saw the process of dying, then one eye became more covered, you could say, than the other eye. eye. So when the right eye, for instance, is, is kind of, you can see that they can't see you with the right eye anymore. It means that their relationship to the world and that transformation of the of the me that it it's nice when it is with these people and it's angry when it's with these people and it is it adapts itself constantly that's gone they are really true to themselves then and then you have a different treatment but also a different communication when it would be the other way around mm -hmm. okay good uh, i think uh we'll take a few minutes break, maybe five minutes. Um, That's a good idea. Five minutes is great. Shall I stop the, the recording? Uh, yeah, I'll yeah, I'll pause it. Uh, I'll pause yeah. it. All right. Maybe, maybe there, if there's a question on what we did now till now, that there's space for. So if if somebody have a real question about what we discussed till now, then maybe you can raise your hand or open your mic and and uh, say what's on your heart. Are there any any questions so far? Um, I see Mark opens. It's not a question, Jan. It's just to uh, Jan is just to tell you your answers are amazing. It's take <laughs> my breath away. So just keep going. I am listening. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, what did we talk about just now before the break? I <laughs> lost the thread. Um, good. Um, maybe we'll go because you talked about this this vertical axis on you know, the the importance of the the Jing Shen. Yes. Um, for uh, health, or or it's it's like a foundation, found pretty fundamental aspect of of health and well being is that aspect of presence. Um, and you said that's more like a universal aspect. Yeah. So it's not so much to do with what you want or what I want. Yeah. Um, there's a question about the aspect then of um, Hun and Po, yeah, and we, we then go more into what we also said before, the horizontal axis, yeah, um, and um, so can you go into the aspect of the three Hun and seven Po um, and what that means uh, in terms of maintenance of health or, or, um, or yeah, <clears throat> yes, I will try. That, that's a good subject to talk about. If you if you say there is a vertical axis which is not personal, which we can use in in health or becoming more healthy, um, often that doesn't work like that because we are people, we are persons, we have a me, we have desires, we have instincts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the five. Shen uh, is, is the personal Shen, you could say, is the Yi, that is related to Earth, is the Po, seven Po, seven instincts related to metal, the Zu, which is what we call the will, it's also a difficult name, um, which relates to water, and the three Hun is related to wood. The Hun and Shen are more related to each other. They say after death, the Hun and the Shen go back to the subtle realm, although other people say that part of the Hun also stays here, um, the more physical part of it. And the seven Ho are related to the Jing, and they stay here when we die. Um, Often the seven Po are seen as nasty elements, <laughs> making our life difficult, and they do. But they also need it. The, the seven Po is are, are aspects of our being, which is also needed 
um, for our life. It makes us phys physical. Um, the bones, for instance, they are white. The teeth should be white, especially when you're young. And that is aspect of the pool, <clears throat> that we have this structure, that, is, that we have substance and structure is due to the pool. One of the first elements there when, when we are conceived. So it's a very important aspect of our being. Um, you have seven poles, five of them are related to the five phases, and there's one yang and one yin aspect. Um, there are very powerful energies, instinctive, animal related, they say, so they they <clears throat> they're not so related to virtues, you could say. So they if you want something, they desire something, then that goes often through the pole. The hun is the other aspect, it's more related to virtue. There are three hun, one is more to the upper jiao, one to the middle jiao, one more to the lower jiao. The upper jiao has to do with virtue, with intuition, with with subtle realm, you could say, subtle dimension. Um, the the middle one is more related to our social activities and the way we communicate with each other on a on a more virtue kind of way related to to balance to taking care of each other to empathy sympathy um, instincts are more like this is mine this is yours yeah metal is more with discrimination with fighting with opposition um but it's also, metal is also necessary for introspection. So the good side of the Po is that we are able to, in, to, do have, to have introspection, to look at ourselves, to look in the mirror and see yourself and see what you like and what you dislike. The Hun is much more subtle, more, more um, like what your dreams are, what you how you want to guide your destiny yourself, uh, how you how you want to be guided. Uh, dreams itself are related to the hun very often. Uh, so that is that's how we relate in this world to ourselves and to our society, the hun and the po. So when that is out of balance, then also that jing shen goes out of balance. So. You need to see if the Jing Shen, if they communicate well, is there a good relationship with between the Hun and the Po? That's also something to take into account in treatment. And then it, it all circles around the Yi. The Yi is the center, is the earth. I think that we will discuss that also later during when we go through the next chapters. We'll talk about this aspect, Hun, Po, Shen, the and ye more. Uh, but for now, I want to say something about the yi. Because the character, the Chinese character of yi is made from the heart, the, the, the heart as the zhe, both have the basic character of the heart. And in the yi, above that is a description of what we call the sound of a musical instrument or sound of music or, or a vibration, you could say. So the yi is, you could say, it listens to the heart. It listens to the heart. It's the sound of the heart is expressed. That often is not done. It, the, the sound of our actions is often based on desires. It's often based on will. So when you see something nice, uh, the next thinking often is, oh, that's nice. I would like to have that, or maybe, no, that's too expensive, or I would like, but it's not possible. Maybe I, sh maybe I should buy it, or maybe uh, there's something which often happens when you see something, or when you see something you don't like, and, oh, I don't want that. Uh, immediately there is the me comes in between. That is not meant with listening to the heart, because that heart, that heart aspect is a subtle aspect which has not to do with the mind, not to do with time, which is from a realm which is beyond our physical existence, but it stays for a 
period of years, stays within our body. So listening to the heart uh, is without me involved. It means again that it has to do with being present. Uh, because when I'm really present, I don't think what I've learned, what I discussed, or I'm here. I'm, I'm looking at you now, Hun, and I see you, and I talk to you, and I know that there are other people, but I don't think of other things. The moment I even say that, they are already there, and it, then the he is not here anymore. So being present, it's different from being focused. Focus is that you uh, limit yourself. When you're focused, there is just this. But with the yi, you're present here, but you're present everywhere. Whatever there is, you're present without any limitation. That is the musical sound of the heart. Like the shen is always present. The yi makes you having that present presence. That is important. That's why some people start always treating with the spleen. Yeah, when you read their books, they start with treating the spleen and then anything else comes. So what we said about Jing Shen is important as it is with the Yi. So when the spleen is not uh, for functioning well, you need to work on that as well. When that is vertical axis in kind of balance that the Yi listens to the heart, there's connection between Shen and Jing. And hopefully that Po and Hun also, because they react to the vertical axis. But often it's also needed to treat that. Sometimes the Hun is so active that it, it influences the Shen too much. But we come into that later when we do the next chapters, when we talk about the five heavens, we also talk about the Hun. Uh, for instance, when we talk about the green azure dragon heaven, that has a lot similar qualities as the Hun. And we'll talk about the Hun-Shen relationship. So, yes, the Hun and Po are important, but secondary. So first is the vertical axis, and then Hun and Po. <laughs> my understanding. Okay. Um, yeah, I can see that it's very hard to, to kind of just stick to these chapters, and sometimes we just cover more basic uh, concepts, and then we'll come back to them maybe in later uh, webinars. But the um, let's come back a little bit to um, actually what what people can are very much focused on when they hear about stems and branches. That's the birth chart. Yeah. Um, um, a question that's always always being asked here is because uh, also in your book, I think yeah, you you focus very much yeah on the year chart, yeah uh, as uh, a guidance for treatment, yeah and um, and uh, whereas in Batsa, uh they take the four pillars or three pillars if they they don't know the the hour. Um, why do do you focus so much on the year chart uh, for treatment? Um, yeah, the easy easy answer could be because I've learned from Dr. Van Buren that it's more important, but you never spoke to me about it, why it's so important. You just said it's essential to you and your work on it. So I had to do my own uh, research. And later I spoke to him about him, uh, with him about it and he agreed, but you never know with him because he, he didn't say often no. So when you ask something, <laughs> he could say yes and it wasn't yes. But I'm pretty sure what I will tell you now is 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 also what he thought. I'll, I'll show you something. When you look to this this uh, this picture, um, this is the sun. Yeah, here's the sun. This is the Earth, and the moon goes around it. Yeah, but th this is the Earth. This is the axis of the Earth, and so it goes around the sun. Yeah. And so you have 12 of these, these positions, and these are the 12 branches or the Chinese hourly clock or the 12 channels, etc., etc. Yeah. So the sun is a kind of 
essential point where we have an orbit around the sun. That is related to the stems. That essentiality of its function, that is, and that's the law of an energy, that is also seen in the heavenly stems. When we look to the earth here, and you see the axis, it turns in 24 hours, it turns. So the 24 hour clock or the 12 branches or within one day, that is the circumference. Like the earth here is the circumference of this circle and with the stem in the middle, this axis of the earth is around that there is the movement of the branches. So you see the movement of the branches here, there are 12 and the movement around the branch of the, of the circumference of the earth in 24 hours is also branches. So the, the quality of the stems is more central, the quality of the branches is more the periphery. Originally, there were first the 12 branches, to be honest. Yeah, when you look into the Chinese calendar, the origin of the Chinese calendar, they first spoke about branches before they talked about stems. Uh, but the calendar is made of stems and branches, among other things. Now, the when you look at the sun, there's one year that's an orbit. That whole year, we see 12 branches and you see 10 stems, but the stem is related to the sun. So that stem says something about essential chi, about the core of your being. And maybe you wouldn't be surprised, but in Bazu, originally, they also worked with the year as the most essential part. But later, when the culture changed and people are more interested in what will happen now, who am I, who is the me and me, and what profession, and how many children, etc. Then you come more to the personal aspect of it. That is that earth going around his own axis in 24 hours, these branches, that's more one day. So the Bazu took that day energy as more important. Dr. Van Buren said the, 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 the stem and branch of the day is more your inner consciousness. But when you look at the essential chi of the year, that's not only your inner consciousness, that is consciousness. And as I said, the Shen is aspect. Is Shen has a Yuan Shen and a personal Shen, let's say. The, the Shen in the heart is more the personal Shen. But that is that comes from a more subtle realm, a, a certain in connection with everything made personal for us, inside us. That that consciousness or part of intelligence or part of love, anything you can give it a name, that is essential for our being, for our health, our wholeness, our communication, anything. If you don't have that, you're not alive. That originally was more important than the day energy, with much more had to do with the year, your inner consciousness, you consciousness of yourself and the consciousness of how you look into uh, society and what is your relationship. Therefore, the day energy became more important. And the month energy is more related to social activities with your work, uh, with your friends, um, these kind of things. So it's, it's really your interaction with the world. That is more branch level. That is the circumference. That's good. It's not. I don't qualify it as better or worse, but I try to define it in the in the more dense or less dense quality, like this consciousness, this complete consciousness of the sun, the central aspect of our being. That's more subtle. the The way we communicate with the world, that's more dense. The inner consciousness is more dense because it's really the me principle and the things I want and I didn't things I dislike or the things I expect or et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So there it's a difference of density. 
and Bazu developed into the direction of, of the day uh, more than it stayed with the year. And we in Stanton Branches uh, Acupuncture, we, we still work on, on the year chart, but we do take into account the more you study stems and branches, the more you take into account the month and the day and the hour, if possible, people know that. So in, in practical terms uh, about treatment, you know, because often um, also among stems and branches practitioners, you, know, you, you, you hear that you'll take care of the symptoms first, and then you can worry about these subtle realms. You know, that's, that's more like a something to work on afterwards. You no, know? so how do you work with that? Yeah. So in practical terms to treat conditions, you know, that somebody suffers with. And and how do you combine that? You no, know? and how do you combine that with with um also past things that happened? Yes. Yeah. So what what's your your hierarchy then? Um, in, in treating people. Yeah, I still remember in the beginning when I started acupuncture, and especially when I started stems and branches, I had the same discussion inside myself, and that this is acute and I need to do symptoms first. Yeah. Every time I did that, sometimes I succeeded, often I didn't succeed, to be honest. Um, We forget that when we work according to stems and branches, it's also for acute diseases. It's not something which you don't do. The symptoms disappear when you work on that level of stems and branches, especially stems is very important. I saw one question uh, came in on that, that heavenly stems, working on heavenly stems is preventative and working on branches is curative. That is not how, how it was given to us, not by by teachers like Chang Bin Lee, but also not by Van Buren, it, the preventative treatment is maybe the, when people study it is like, like the um, corrective qi that could be sometimes be preventative. Like qi, that's preventative. Unlike qi is always curative. Um, so there's not the difference between preventative, curative between stems and branches. On the contrary, when you work on stems, you work very much on that whole concept of wholeness, you could say, or central point of yourself, not only the sun, but it's the central part of your being you work on. Why couldn't that be also treat the symptoms? And people think often that when you have symptoms, you have pain in your shoulder, you immediately put needles to take away the pain of your shoulder. That doesn't have to be it, but you can really work on, on stems and branches, let's say, when there's shoulder pain. But of course, it allows you also to put, put some symptomatic points. So if you see there is a possibility to treat the small intestine because you think that is an important energy to work on within stems and branches, and that also works on the shoulder, of course, you take a point that works specifically on that shoulder. There's nothing wrong with that. But you don't do it because of the symptom. So you always treat the whole person within his birth chart challenges and imbalances, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'm not against treating symptoms, but I do I do have difficulties even, I, I, I found it myself when I was younger, when I only treat the symptoms without, without taking consideration the quality of the birth chart, maybe you help a person for a short term, but not on the long term. Because the, the, the difficulty is more, more deeper, more essential often than just that symptom. Um, I think like when it is so acute that it is life-threatening, and you don't even have time to make a stems and branches chart. Of course, you can do a symptomatic treatment. But I always ask them to come back to balance their energy. Same with pregnancy. When a woman wants to deliver, there are certain points to help the delivery. So, of course, you can use these points. But beforehand, you can ask the woman, listen, I will do a certain treatment. But please come back when your child is born. Because then I can 
balance your original energies again. So you become whole inside yourself again. Um, so yes, you can do symptomatical treatment if you don't have time to do any stems and branches calculation and you see it's life-threatening or very needed that the child is being born, then then don't think, then you just, just do these points. Uh, and the same with when you see, let's say, I heard that people in Myanmar see hundreds of people during the day. Sometimes there is no time to do a stems and branches calculation, but yes, sometimes you, you know you can check it uh, quickly or you can do it afterwards that you learn from it. And, and don't be afraid to use it because people always think, yeah, but I did the stems and branches treatment and they don't became better. They will become better uh, without any problem. And still, you can also do symptomatic points as long as it sticks within the challenges of the birth chart. <laughs> and um, where in, in, in that concept is that concept of... Um... For instance, what you talked about before, like the the Jing and the Shen come in. You know, um, how do you bring that into a stems and branches treatment? So let's say you see that that somebody's Shen is not rooted or somebody's Jing is deficient. Um, do you work still through the stems and branches or is that something you need to address first? Um, both. Both most of the time you can work in stems and branches because there's a reason why it is not in balance. <clears throat> um, maybe I can give you an example. Um, yeah, let's let's. Start. I hope that people can understand it because we didn't discuss all the aspects of stems and branches. Uh, so when you you can't follow it, then hopefully you can follow this discussion at a later time. But for instance, somebody is stomach in fire. That, that's an energy where there's easily energy rising up. These people are usually quite creative, but they do a lot of things. They can't sit still so often. And the unlike chi of stomach in fire is kidney in fire. So it means that the kidney fire is a challenge because that energy has a tendency to be weaker because of the birth chart. They are born with stomach and fire, and then the unlike chi has a tendency to be weaker. So kidney and fire has a tendency to be weaker. Now, kidney and fire energy is often misunderstood, you could say, by people, because it, they like to express it as a very fiery will, for instance. They do a lot of things. They want a lot of things. They, they have a lot of stamina. They they, they go out in the world while the kidney and fire actually is a winter energy, which is the, that the energy, the fire is contained within, that gives you strength within, instead of spreading it out into the world. And especially in a year like this, with, which today, this year is kidney and fire. So there's a lot of fire in the kidney, a lot of activity, a lot of things people want to do and they desire a lot, while the actual meaning for people kidney and fire who have the challenge to develop that is to keep that strength inside as a root of your being. So these people, they easily uh, flare up, you could say. So in that case, you work more on that aspect of grounding, of, of rooting. While, for instance, when you're, let's say, a heart in wood, then the metal is too strong. Yeah, that's one aspect. When heart in root, the heart in wood and the metal has a tendency to be stronger. It means that the wood quality has a tendency to be a bit to be a bit weaker. It means there's an imbalance in in wood and metal. So when that metal is very active and there is a lot of um, people are very um, how do you call it? They have a structure. They have a way of have an agenda which is very precise all the time. And so they work on their instinct. They 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 want to see things happening as they like it. They want um, uh, how do you say that a strict order. So they're very metallic in their way. When you're very metallic, there's an imbalance in metal and wood already, and it becomes more and more imbalanced. Then of course that central axis 
can be straight. So first you balance that and see what happens with the vertical axis, heart, uh, kidney, or Jing Shen. And usually it balances up, but then you can do an extra point to, to um, underline that relationship. And that could be a heart point or a kidney point. With heart and wood, you don't treat heart so much, but you could do a point on the chest like CD14, for instance, or you can do a governor point working on the heart sheet. Anything but possible to balance heart and kidney. Kidney 16 I mentioned before. So there are more possibilities after you, you treated the balance between heart and wood to balance the Jin Shan. But you, but you take it always into account in your treatment. If you see that, that's out of balance. So you have to look, why is the imbalance there? And most of the times when you study stems and branches, it's not that difficult to find the imbalance because the challenge is misunderstood because there's too much desire or lack of desire or there are circumstances where there are trauma or there, there, there is situation which influence the people a lot and they react in a certain way. You have to balance that first and then you work on the Jing Shen to, to ask for that or to require for that what I call love to be tuned in into your treatment. So uh, are you saying that when you work on that level of the stem and great movement and you balance um, especially the great movements or the the um, that you work on that aspect of Jing Shen? Yes, that? definitely, definitely. Because often, not always, but often you work on the horizontal or vertical axis. Uh, so let's say if you work on, on liver and metal, and a large intestine on metal, you work on the relationship between metal, fire, because in liver and metal, the fire is stronger. In large intestine and metal, the wood has the tendency to be subdued, you could say, as, so that's weaker. So in liver and metal, the metal is weaker, fire is stronger, large intestine and metal is stronger, the wood is weaker. So when you work on that balance, you work on the balance metal, wood, fire. So again, you have this horizontal axis and fire. So when you add something with the root at that in that treatment, you balance this this vertical axis and its horizontal field. That is nearly always you can come back to that. <laughs> okay. Um we'll have about yeah 10, 15 minutes left. Uh so maybe we'll we'll have that open for questions. There is one question that um Arthur Kelly asked about, um, will it be okay to combine the heavily stem treatment um, with uh, like complementary channels like divergent channels or, or um, so how, how, how does that come into stems and branches treatment? That's a very good question. Thank you for that. Um... In stems and branches treatment, of course, we also work with divergent channels, senior channels, lua channels, all the channels. Um, usually not separately from stems and branches. Um, of course, when it's needed, if there, it's needed to treat a divergent channel first before you can see it can work on stems and branches. And it's needed you do that but often because we are human people we are humans it's not like like an artificial thing uh, the idea of stems and branches or constitutional acupuncture is that you are born with a certain imbalance and we react or act according to that imbalance so what i said for instance when you are born let's say liver in metal there's a tendency of the metal to be weaker and the fire to be stronger. It means that you need in your life, you need to understand that the fire could calm down a bit or the metal could be stronger. So these people need to have certain structure. If they don't have any structure at all, it means something is not in balance according to their birth chart, if you only look to the heavenly stand. If something happens, for instance, there is a trauma uh, and the trauma 
or an accident or this a long-term disease or anything that happens to these people, they will act the same way. They don't suddenly react differently. So it means that there's a tendency for liver and metal people that the fire flares up easily. Yeah. If that happens when there is something happening to them, then it's normal. And so when that affects at a certain, that becomes too much for them, for instance, that the whole system is overloaded with emotions. The lower channels are involved and the divergent channels can be involved as well. But it starts with that reaction out of that birth chart. So you treat that, of course, that imbalance, the tendency, you calm it down in a stems and branches way. And then, of course, you can treat the lower channel or the divergent channel with it because there is an imbalance because of what happened to them. But if you don't treat the constitution or the, let's say the birth chart aspect of it, you will treat that happening, but they still keep on going, having this fire so strong. So you always combine it, but it doesn't have to mean that you do only a divergent treatment and then later a stem treatment because they are who they are. And it's never that you do things because of the chart, but the chart is helping you to understand your diagnosis or pulse diagnosis or channel diagnosis or tongue diagnosis, whatever you do kind of, it helps you to understand what is actually happening in that person. And if that person has no fire at all, liver and matter person, what's going on there? Why isn't there this flaring fire? There must be somewhere an imbalance. And if you can find that, you, you come closer to the origin of the imbalance and to understand that. And you can treat that all together. That's no problem. As long as you have, you see what's going on in that person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are there any any more questions um, from um, what we, we covered today? Otherwise we can maybe, um, I don't know if you have more questions. Um, yeah, then we, we just continue with, with for 10 minutes with, with questions that were emailed. Um, so nobody has a question? No. Um, There's a question, there's one hand. Can you open your microphone, Amanda? Yes, hi, Johan, and thank hi. you for um, an, a, an inspiring and ma an amazing um, afternoon and for giving your time to us, much appreciated. And lovely <laughs> to see many people I haven't seen for a while. Yes, same here. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to ask, I know, um, I think it was in the first chapter, you mentioned, you know, if people's birth chart falls on or very near the date when the year changes, um, how do you decide, or do you do both charts, or how do you decide which one to go with? Yeah. And and of course, the, the perennial one of northern and southern hemispheres. Uh that's I will I will try to these the are two great questions, but it's uh, I will try to to answer them within the time needed. Um, first of all, your question when people are born near the change of the year, like like Dr. Van Buren took um, the second new moon after winter solstice as the beginning of the new year. The beginning of the new year was not always the same. There were times that the uh, branch San Jiao, was the first month there were time that as now the lung branch is the first of the new year there were times the goal better the zhe was the first beginning of the year so that changed a lot and at a certain moment there was a an emperor not even an emperor only um, that they decided that it's the second new moon is the beginning of the year so what happens when you are born that because the great movement they start on the 20th of january and the farmer's new year is the 5th of February, the beginning of springtime. Um, so it's always arbitrary what you what you choose. Um, the best I can tell you is that you should check um, the chart because 
people are very different. If people are born, let's say, kidney in fire or gallbladder in earth, that's, for instance, a change, yeah? Are they still kidney in fire or they become gallbladder in earth? You find in the pulse, you find lots of um, um, symptoms, you could say, or signs that say, oh, no, this is a kidney in fire person. This is a, is a gallbladder in earth person. But I usually make two charts. In the beginning, I definitely did to see what's going on here. And then, then you decide what to do. But it's always difficult when people are born around that, that area in the, in the calendar. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> and Southern and Northern Hemisphere. Um, that is a that's a difficult subject, also personal for me, because um, for a long time it was that when Dr. Van Buren gave lectures in Australia, there was a person and he said, shouldn't be the Daitian and Tutian, the six divisions, half of the year, should it be changed? And they said, yes, that's correct. So that for years and years, people did that. Um, before he passed away, I asked him, how is that possible? That, that's not always possible, isn't it? I said, it's nonsense. It's not like that at all. <laughs> and, and then he said something which, um, well, I dislike to talk about, because I, I disagree with you know, his opinion, which I hardly do. But he said the Stems and Branches chart is for the whole world. And for me, that, that couldn't be, it didn't work like that. When I was in Australia, especially as well, I saw so many proofs that it can't be like that. Because... Like when we're here in midwinter, there is midsummer. Uh, so I checked with many, many people during the years. I think it's already now for 30 or 35 years I'm checking this. And what I've seen is that the beginning of the year in the Northern Hemisphere is around, let's say, the second new moon after winter solstice. But that is the same in the Southern Hemisphere. But the winter solstice is when it's summer here. So the only thing you have to find out is who is first. <laughs> yeah. And what I've seen, and I have no idea why, <laughs> is that it's later there. So we are now around, they are still in the first half of 2023, you could say. We are in the second half. So in that say, it changes. But we go into the next year energy around February. We go in 2024. Yeah. And so we go to Goldman and Earth. They are still within the second half of 2023, like kidney fire. Yeah. So their start is different. And sometimes that's a change of the half of the year, but sometimes it's just a different year. Because in the first half of this year, they were still in, in uh, Bladder and Wood. That's according to my understanding, what I've seen. And if I make a mistake, then I'm very, very sorry, Dr. Van Buren, uh, that I disagreed with you, but that's that's how I understand it. And there's much more to say about it, but that's too short for now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. One last question, Johan, and then probably uh, we finish today's webinar. Um, it might be uh, a bit too early to ask this question, but uh, you brought up that that example of somebody born liver and metal. Yes. And the the metal is passive, fire becomes active. Yeah, and you said yeah that that we are uh, we are born with these imbalances. Yeah, and our our aim is to um to create a certain balance. Uh, well, or, to balance. work on these imbalances or yeah. work with them? The imbalance stays. You, all, you die with it. But it is a challenge to develop something inside yourself which calms down the activity if it's overactive. And so you you find more peace inside yourself. Balance, I don't think it's just a balance, but it's finding the peace in it. Okay, the question is, if the person born with that uh, imbalance, uh, Liver and metals or fire. Uh, so, if later on the fire becomes weak and the metal becomes overly strong, which should be passive by birth, uh, is that 
a problem? Is that not normal? That's not something you would expect in that. No. If if it's then the the compensation is too strong. And it has a reason. You have to find the reason why people do that. So when people, for instance, with liver in metal, as I said, liver is, is a wood aspect. So liver in metal means that the metal has the has a flexibility. There is always flexibility. Um, so if they become very constricted in their behavior, that's an overcompensation of the challenge of taking up the challenge. And usually it comes back to, to fear or shame, one of them. Yeah. And so you need to to treat, I don't know how to call that, but see what's the reason behind this fear uh, or this shame that makes them so constricted or so rigid. Maybe. That's a better word, rigid. Uh, and when the fire is that weak, usually that's also because of guilt or shame. And and so you need to take that in consideration of your of your treatment because shame is is something which really affects the identity of a person and we like to hide it away and there you see that fire you become shy you you, you go inside you don't want to show yourself and with guilty the, the the energy goes down to the to the lower jaw the, the fire is put into the lower jaw. And you find a hot lot of heat there to empty the heart. And so you find then the fire to be insufficient, but there's a lot of heat going on in the abdomen. And, and then you need to treat that um, first and see if the fire comes back, because it's an abnormal balance if that happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One last question from me, because we... we look at these as quantities, we put a minus and we put a plus, so a minus. Are these not more qualities, you know, that the metal is passive in nature, but not necessarily deficient, and the, the fire is active in, in nature, or young in nature, and uh, so when the, when the metal is passive in its right way, it should be able to receive the fire. Yes, it should be. It should be able to attach the fire. You could say it's both. It's quantity and quality. But it's like we tend to discriminate quantity and quality all the time. Uh, but it doesn't work like that. Sometimes you find a balance of these two. It's, it's never just only quantity or quality. But definitely it is also quality. It's not just quantity. You can't say when there is a let's say a lot of uh, dryness that you can say, oh, there's a lot of dryness, that's quantity. But the dryness itself is a quality. So it's it's always both. <laughs> yeah. So it's like the K cycle and the Sheng cycle. They are always both there. Yeah. One is more the quality, K cycle. One is more the quantity, Sheng cycle. Okay. Good. Um... Yeah, yeah, I think we, we've we come to the end of, of today's webinar. Um, so we'll bring it to a close and I'll stop the recording. I think we still have some, have you stopped it already? Uh, no, I haven't. No, we, have some more questions. we have some information still or not? No question, are there any, is there anybody who wants to ask, ask a question? Um, then just open your mic and and just ask. Uh, have I covered uh, Regine? Have I covered all the questions that were sent in? Um, yes, I think so. There was maybe, well, maybe some questions that are not really answered. Um, my suggestion is that if people feel like their question isn't answered, they send it again to me. We collect them and then we'll see if we can address them either next time or in another way. Is that okay with you, Johan? Yeah, that's okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Still, I think most uh, of the questions are, are, are answered or covered somehow. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think I have my information ready yet for the... Um... Johan, can I ask just a yeah. very quick question? Uh, do you know? 
Right. Just a quick follow-up question to uh, Amanda's question about the Southern Hemisphere. So based on what you were saying about uh, shifting the whole chart by six months, uh, so somebody born in the Southern Hemisphere, then you would use uh, sort of to calculate their birth chart, you would then uh, use um, this altered six-month chart. Yes, yeah, so let yeah. imagine imagine somebody was born, let's say, in March two thousand twenty-three, mm -hmm. southern hemisphere. Yeah, according to the northern hemisphere, that person already in his birth chart has kidney and fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. but in the southern hemisphere, the year is still going on till somewhere in this, in our summer, their winter. Yeah. So they are still yeah, yeah. they're still bladder and wood. So that's yeah. the second half of bladder and wood. Yeah. So you should really swap it half a year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So one thing, one thing, Gina, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I do remember something which is important to say, and that's very strange. Um, when, when people live for 30 years in the Northern Hemisphere after being born in the Southern Hemisphere or the other way around, they take up the energy of the Northern Hemisphere. So when mm -hmm. you're born, I know where you were born. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I remember, is that yeah. when, when you live your life more in the Northern Hemisphere for more than 30 years, then it is if you were born in the Northern Hemisphere. It's very strange. I don't know how it works, but I've seen it quite a lot of times now that when people were born, let's say in Canada, and they move to Australia, and they are there for more than 30 years, they take on that energy of Southern Hemisphere and the other way around. So that can shift your character. Mm -hmm. Even if their accent doesn't change. Yes, even if their accent <laughs> doesn't change. <laughs> yeah, so Janal and I are both born in Kenya. I know. Um, which is kind of on the equator as well. So that's yeah, that's, of... even, that's even more difficult. It's, yeah. it's, very difficult. it's like in Australia, when you're at the level of Cairns, then at a certain half of the year, that's where the Capricorn orbit of Capricorn is. Then suddenly the sun is above you like the Northern Hemisphere when you're born above Cairns in a certain time of period. But if you're born at another time, then suddenly you're Southern Hemisphere. So don't go into that now. That's why I said there's much more to say about it. <laughs> That's too far for now. Sorry for that. Yeah. Thank you. Most welcome. Okay. Good. I think, um, yeah, that's uh, that we leave it with that today. Yeah. Good. Um, so we we'll... uh, still have some information. The the email address. I think I have it ready by now. All right. Yeah. So if you want to, um, as I said, yeah, we'll, we, we are planning to have um, further webinars, Q&A webinars about other chapters uh, of the book and questions you have. If you want to, um, we don't have a date for that yet. So if you want to stay updated about that, um, then uh, send you on uh, an email on 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 the email address you see there. And if you have questions that you want to discuss, then send an email to Rechin. Uh, both emails you see here. And um, there are also two recordings of of lectures that you did in Australia. Um, about uh, 10 stems, 12 branches and um, They've um, edited them now and they're available to buy on the the address that you see uh, on the slide now. Yeah, the, the last one, the second one, hopefully that will be on sale before the end of the year. The first one is already on sale. Good. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we'll close this meeting today. Uh, thank you everybody for participating.
I thank you all for being there. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll see each other again uh, in the next webinar. Okay, thank you, Yon, as well. So we stop. Thank you very much. Bye.